Okay. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote? Trustee Convoy. Trustee Convoy. Here. Trustee Farrell Mayor. Here. Trustee Kennedy. Here. Uh, Trustee Metz. Trustee Metz. Not here. Okay. Uh, Trustee O'Loughlin. Here. And uh, Trustee Wittenberg. Here. And Mayor Hinshaw. Yep. And did you get uh, Trustee Convoy? He is here. I did, but I did not get Trustee Metz. Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. I'd like to welcome uh, everybody. Um, I need to read. Uh, special rules because we're operating uh, under the uh, special declaration of our governor. The village continues to operate under the emergency declaration of the governor with regards to open meetings. To this end, the village board will still conduct its business remotely. The village will record this meeting and make it available on its website as soon as possible after the meeting. Don, can you mute the uh, everybody, please? Until the executive order is lifted, the village will conduct its business 100% remotely. We will not be going to a hybrid system where some of the public attends remotely and some attend in person. We will either be in physical attendance or 100% remote. Persons wishing to submit questions tonight may do so via text message via email or verbally through Zoom during the public comment portions of the meeting. I would ask if you're um, in the audience, please mute yourself, thank you. At some point in the future, we will be returning to pre-pandemic meetings and hopefully that will be next month, but we will see. Uh, again, I wanna welcome everybody here tonight. Uh, we are broadcast on uh, Comcast channel six. YouTube, of course, the Zoom call and Facebook Live. Um, first item uh, is the Pledge of Allegiance. We could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first item on our agenda is uh, approval of minutes. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve? We're getting an echo. Mm hmm. I'm I can't hear. It. Can we try again? Can somebody make a motion? Oh, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda minutes. I'll second. Thank you, Sean and Rita. Oops. Uh, Charlie, I'm not sure if you can mute or Eileen, if one of you could mute. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're both in the same room. That may be some of the issue. Okay, uh, any questions or comments about the minutes? All right, seeing none from the Board of Trustees. Um, Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote, please? Trustee Convoy. Uh, I think we're all muted, Tom. No, okay, Trustee should... Convoy. Say hi to the microphone. Yeah. Hi. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee Farrell Mayor. Hi. Trustee Kennedy. Hi. Is Trustee Metz here? No. No. Nope. Uh, Trustee O'Loughlin. Hi. And Trustee Wittenberg. Hi. Thank you. All right, that's been approved. Thank you. Next item is approval of payables. Would somebody like to make a motion? 
I'll make a motion to approve the payables for the period ending April 30th, 2021 in the amount of $630,503.46. I'll second. Thank you, Brenda and Sean. Any questions? Maureen, can you do the financial update, please? So at the end of March, cash on hand was 2.8 million. Revenue for the month was about 565,000. Payables were 630,000. There was about 103,000 for road work, which was previously approved. Uh, with leaving an ending cash balance at the end of April with 2.77 million. Eileen, if you could please mute. Okay, uh, any questions from the trustees? Okay, uh, any questions from the trustees? Okay, uh, can you mute, Eileen? Eileen, could you please mute? Okay, Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote, please? Trustee Convoy. Trustee Convoy. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee Farrell Mayor. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Once again, Trustee Metz. Okay, uh, Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. And Trustee Wittenberg. Aye. Thank you. That's uh, been approved. All right. And last uh, for the approval of the preliminary financial report. I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary financial report for the period ending April 30th, 2021. I'll second. Thank you, Brenda and Rita. Any questions? John, do you have anything you want to add to that? No, I do not. Any questions? I'm looking at the trustees. I do not see any. Uh, Clerk Allison, could we please have a roll call vote? Certainly. Trustee Convoy. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayor. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Metz. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. And Trustee Wittenberg. Aye. Thank you. That has been approved. Uh, I may have said the last item, but next to the last <laughs> item, uh, now we need to accept the uh, election results for the April 2021 consolidated election. I'll make a motion to accept the election results for the 2021 consolidated election as provided by the Cook County Clerk. I'll second. Thank you, Sean and Rita. Any questions? Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote, please? Trustee Convoy. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayor. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Metz. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Wittenberg. Aye. Thank you. That has passed. Okay, uh, right before we do the uh, swearing in, um, we have two outgoing trustees. Uh, start with Sean Convoy. Um, I wanna thank Sean for his time on the board. Uh, Sean um, was very uh, instrumental on the board and Sean uh, has done other service for the community. He served uh, on the school board. He's been um, a youth sporting coach uh, he was on uh, Little League uh, board. Uh, I know there's more, but those are the ones that I remember. Uh, so, Sean, thank you very much for all your service to the village. Uh, is there anything you would like to say? Yeah, so, uh, Tom, thanks for, uh, for that. I did want to kind of, uh, you know, leave with mixed emotions, but I think that uh, the body of work that you and I have worked on uh, for over 22 years or so, starting with the Little League and, um, you know, coaching. We coached uh, so many basketball teams together and probably coached over uh, close to 60 different youth teams. Uh, and then, you know, going to the school board, um, you know, I was with you for...
time, whether it's little league fields or batting cages or uh, sidewalks. Uh, I think that uh, you know your your leadership is appreciated. And then um, I also wanted to thank all the the trustees, um, but uh, especially I Amy Wittenberg. You know we um, uh, we've also served uh, on the school board and and this so that's a, over a 12 year. Um, I think over 12, 14 year period of time, so thanks for uh, all your support for that. Uh, and, and then personally, I'd like to thank Chris Metz. Um, it, um, you know, uh, we, we only served a, a few years on the board together, but um, you know, I think I tried to help get him elected to the board at least three or four times. So um, I'm sure that uh, he will convince. So thank you everybody for that. Um, you know, I, I just, I feel like I just, uh, this is my swan song, so I just want to say, you know, we always, always try to do the right thing. Um, some things, uh, uh, some things were tougher decisions, but I always try to do things transparently and, and for the right reason. And uh, I think it's just time to now focus on the family and focus on tennis. And I came here in person because I thought there was going to be a party, but um, uh, it's quiet here. So thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, the village, for giving me the opportunity to serve. It's been uh, great. It's been a really uh, positive experience, and I appreciate uh, everything that you guys do. And um, I think we'll just focus on uh, on those things and then also, um, you know, work on uh, trying to prevent the expansion of Wolf Road and expansion of Plainfield Road, which uh, I am not in support of. So that will be uh, uh, something I'm working on inside. But thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for the, the, the gifts. It was very thoughtful. And uh, <laughs> see, you, see you around. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you again, Sean. I would like to thank uh, Amy Jo Wittenberg. Uh, Amy uh, grew up in the village. Um, I know she did a uh, paper route uh, in Wilshire Green uh, and other places. Uh, she was uh, a cadet with the uh, police department. Uh, I might, it was it a police department, Amy, back then? I think it yes, was, sir. right? Yeah, uh, yes. And Amy has been uh, involved in many activities. I know very involved with the schools, uh, the school board, and then uh, eight years as a trustee. Uh, Amy always has a, a great outlook on the issue and uh, never afraid to express her opinion. Uh, so Amy, I wanted to thank you very much for your time on the board. Thank you. Thank Would you, Would you like to say anything? Uh, it's been a pleasure serving the community for the last eight years, and I know with uh, the new board members and the existing board members, you guys are going to keep uh, keep forging ahead with important issues in the village, and I wish you all the luck um, and good decision making and guidance as you all plow forward into uh, Indian Head Park's future, and I all thank you very much for, um, for serving. Thank you, Amy. And uh, we have a uh, plaque and uh, gifts that uh, if you could pick up when you get back into town, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks, Amy. Okay, uh, moving along to the uh, oath of offices. It's a uh, very fun time for uh, trustees to get sworn in. Um, we will be starting with uh, Brenda, and please, uh, I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, normally, we do the swearing in here in the village hall, you know, in a normal setting, and people can come and take pictures. But we are going to try to do the uh, swearing in uh, via Zoom. So, Brenda, if you're ready, and hopefully you yeah. love to come back. I'm extremely proud and honored to have my dear friend and attorney. Mark Lefevre here to, this evening to be swearing me in as a village trustee for Indian Head Park. Brenda, any Thank chance you, you could swing you your, your raise your hand, hand please? 
I, Brenda O'Loughlin. I, Brenda O'Loughlin. Having been elected to the Office of Trustee. Having been elected to the Office of Trustee. In the Village of Indian Head Park. In the Village of Indian Head Park. In the County of Cook aforesaid. In the County of Cook aforesaid. To solemnly swear. To solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully faithfully discharge the duties of the office of village trustee of the office of village trustee according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability congratulations thank you again thank you mark um brenda asked me if i would say a few words first of all to my good friends uh sean and amy uh thank you very much for your service as to brenda the third time is a charm and you know the, the citizens of indian head park have made an excellent decision again in this time of turmoil in our, our world with the pandemic and everything else, we need a lot of stability. And I think Brenda has proved over the last two terms that she is nothing but a stable person that has helped the village of Indiana Park uh, succeed and flourish. And uh, as a good friend of, of the Walklands, um, we wish Brenda all the, the best in the next term. And I want to congratulate the other trustees or all what many are good friends of ours, you know, for years. Good luck to all of you in the next this term, this next year, and in the next term. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, uh, Brenda and Mark. Okay, moving along. Uh, Eileen, are you ready? And you're on mute, at least the camera I can see. There okay. Yep, thank you. Thank you. My good friend and husband will swear me in. Eileen. Raise my hand. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me, please. I, Eileen Murphy Donnersberger. I, Eileen Murphy Donnersberger. <clears throat> Having been elected to the office of trustee in the village of Indian Head Park. Having been elected to the office of village trustee in Indian Head Park. In the county of Cook. In the, count said, in the county of Cook aforesaid. Who solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the state of Illinois. And the Constitution of the state of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the village trustee. Of the office of the village trustee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me guide. I first met Eileen many years ago. I believe she was only about six years old. Met Shirley, the next trustee, uh, as a friendly neighbor, but quickly learned that Charlie is more than just a friendly neighbor. He is a doggedly committed individual to working hard to make the community in which he lives a better place to live. Ashbrook was very love uh, lucky to have him as president of the board. And now the village is equally lucky. The village of Indian Head Park will benefit greatly from his commitment to making all of its citizens have a much better life. Sorry. As soon as we're through, I've got to leave because I've got to get home. So I'm going to be off screen for about five minutes uh, after this, but we'll rejoin the meeting immediately. I can attest that Charlie is never off duty. <laughs> Sir, would you raise your right hand? Yes. I, Charles Eck. I, Charles Eck. Have been elected to the office of trustee. Have been elected to the office of trustee. In the village of Indian Heart. Indian Head Park and the County of Cook. The village of Indian Head Park and the County of Cook. Aforesaid do solemnly swear. 
course I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of village trustee according to the best of my ability. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of village trustees to the best of my ability. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, Elaine and Charlie. Oh, I guess I forgot to... Uh, say a few kind words about this wonderful woman that I've known since she was six years old. She was a tenacious child, even then, who always wanted to fight for what was right and good. As she thought, her entire professional life was working hard to make other people's lives better. Now she will bring that same drive that same hard work and that commitment to the lives of all of the citizens of the village of Indian Head Park. Thank you. Thank you. All right, congratulations, both Eileen and Charlie may be uh, out of the room. Um, so John, I believe we adjourn this meeting, is that right? Correct. Do we need to have a vote for that adjournment? Please. Uh, Clerk Allison, could you have a roll call? No, you need a motion. A motion. Oh, yes. I'll make a motion to adjourn the special meeting. Uh, the time is 7.23. A second. Thank you, Brenda and Sean. Now, Clerk Allison, yes. we have a roll call vote. All right. Let's do this again. Trustee, let's see. Trustee, well, let's, all right, do I have to move into, I think I have to move into a new set of trustees, correct? Yep, correct. Okay, hold on. And trustee Metz will most likely still be absent. Okay, all right. Then I, I will not call his name for each of the- um, I think you call it. Pat's not in his head, right. I think. Okay, here we go. Trustee Eck. And he may be in uh, he, transit back. Okay, so I'm, I'm, he's not here. Uh, Trustee Dornersberger. You know what? I am so sorry. I was trying to organize things here, so I need to know what we're voting on. <laughs> to adjourn adjourning. Oh, yes. I, okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, Trustee Farrell Mayer. Yes. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Uh, Trustee Metz. No? Okay. And uh, Trustee O'Loughlin. Hi. All right. Thank you. Let, let's see if, if uh, Trustee Eck is back home by now. No, he won't be. Okay, fine. All right. Then he is absent as well for this vote. Thank you. Okay. So now if I'm following along, we're calling our regular meeting. Um, it's following the special meeting. Uh, right, John? So we need another uh, roll call. Clerk Allison. Okay. So this is opening a new meeting. Uh, let's Perfect. see. Uh, I'm going to start with Trustee Dornersberger. To open the meeting, I... Trustee Dornersberger, we are voting on opening up our second... Uh, this, our, uh, we're, I'm sorry, we're not voting, we're just taking attendance. So it's, uh, thank it's you. simply here. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Trustee Dornsberger. Here. You're here. Uh, Trustee Farrell Mayer. Here. Trustee Kennedy. Here. Trustee Metz. Still absent. And Trustee O'Loughlin. Here. Okay. Then we will count Trustee Eck out of the room right now and Trustee Metz. Okay. Four to zero. Okay, uh, again, welcome everybody. Sorry for that uh, uh, change in the meetings. Uh, this is something we do every two years. Uh, so sorry for our rough performance. Uh, at this point in the agenda, it is the uh, mayor's report. Um, so first thing for me is a uh, I-294 tollway update. 
And the first image uh, shows the area of the noise wall. And Andy, I don't know if you're able to put that up. There we go. Um, so the first image is of the noise wall that is going to be replaced this year. And Andy, I don't see that yet. Um, the noise wall uh, Sorry, is... I, are you, can you see my... No. Oh, here. I cannot. Here we go. Why? Uh, that's the uh, third one. Yeah. Huh. One sec. There we go. Very good. Thank you. Um, so in the upper left, you can see the little image that's in the box 4491. Uh, that is the section of the tollway noise wall that is coming down this year. Um, it is roughly from Plainfield Road to the north to about halfway down to Joliet on the south. Uh, please note in the lower right of that image is the noise wall that will be taken down and replaced next year. And that's going from um, Wolf Road all the way up to about again, halfway to Plainfield Road. Uh, there was a resident organized meeting about the tollway project on April 18th that trustee Metz and I attended. Uh, many residents had questions and some were disappointed and upset at the loss of the village land west of Flag Creek and east of the tollway. This property is about a total of four acres in size with an average width of about 100 feet and with some pretty decent grade changes. This effort started back in February 2018 when the village stated our objections to the tollways plan uh, detention areas. We offered some alternative options, and one of the options was this property, as it has no public access and it's not able to be developed. The issue was discussed at several board meetings, and in February 2020, the board approved the sale of the land. Another item of issue with the residents present at the meeting centered around the tollway wall being replaced the noise, the smoke, the lights, and the construction effort. Many questions were about the height, the material, and the look of the wall. The second image is a picture, Andy, a picture of the wall, Dave, David. And Andy's working on that. The second image is a, is a picture of the new wall that is, um, there it is on David's image, um, is a picture of the wall that is taken from the uh, Plainfield Road bridge uh, of the tollway wall that was just put on on the west side of the tollway. And I think Andy is still working on getting that up. And then the third image is that same section of road, but from the resident side of the wall. Uh, the fourth image is a brochure and that's what Andy has up. And that's the first image that Andy just put up. Uh, and then there's another image on the other side of the wall. Uh, the fourth image is a brochure that is on the tollways website and on our village website that has much more information about the tollway walls. And the last image, is the concept landscape plan for the land between Flag Creek and the tollway. Um, a new noise wall will be also added this year along the south side of the Wolf Road ramp onto the south bound 294, and that's close to the Chestnut on the Green Association. Moving on to the Plainfield Road update, Cook County had a presentation and they were taking comments uh, up until May 5th. There was a groundswell of um, residents objecting to the proposed or alternate, excuse me, five lanes. Many residents had individual comments and there was a petition that was turned in. As a reminder, as part of the Cook County presentation, uh, that included a statement of municipal objection to the five lanes. And we are planning, the board is planning a on presenting a resolution 
in opposition to the five lanes at the June meeting. And lastly, regarding Plainfield Road, preparation is starting for the Plainfield Road bridge reconstruction. The work is anticipated to begin mid-summer. Okay, on to item C, sidewalks. There are four main areas in the village sidewalk master plan. Acacia Drive. A new sidewalk will be added this summer alongside the east side of the new rebuilt Acacia Drive. And a reminder, Acacia Drive will be a construction zone all summer and into the fall. You can see that work is already beginning. Next up, Plainfield Road and Wolf Road. Both of those are in a phase one study. We are expecting to have the Wolf Road alternatives available in the fall for residents to review and comment on. I had said earlier at prior meetings that the alternatives would be available this month, but that was an error, so I apologize for that. And lastly, Joliet Road, the process to start the preliminary ex exploration of any land acquisition has started. Tree City USA, the village is a tree city and we take this very seriously. Don Lorenzen will have an update later on the meeting on this. Uh, employee anniversaries, item E. Elior Gabatz has five years as the finance manager and Don Lorenzen two years as our street superintendent. A big thank you to both of them. Appreciate all your hard work. And then uh, lastly, the coronavirus update. In Cook County, we have just over 38% of the population fully vaccinated for COVID. And now anyone 12 years or older can now get the vaccine. If you cannot leave home to get the vaccine shot, you might be able to get the shot in your home. You must be over 65 or have a disability or use adaptive equipment. If you're interested, please call the county at 833-308-1988. The governor has continued the gubernatorial disaster proclamation until May 29th. The county is operating under the mitigation order 2021-7, which a couple of the bullets, uh, indoor restaurant capacity is increased to 50% or 100 individuals, whichever is smaller. Outdoor social events such as weddings, proms, and potlucks increase to lesser of 50% capacity or 100 people. And lastly, fully vaccinated people will be exempt from the capacity count for private social events such as weddings. With that, uh, we are on to public comments. I will look at the Zoom call first to see if there are any comments. Uh, Susan French, you're muted. If you could unmute and then mute when you're done. Thank you. Okay. So uh, my comment is, it's questions and comments. Um, why did you sell, why did you not sell the empty land to the, of the triangle to the tollway. Um, they only wanted about 20%. Nobody lived there. It would have not hampered any homes, okay? But instead, your choice was to underhandedly sell the very important forest from behind our homes, the land that was the only natural buffer left between our homes on Cochise, Pontiac, and Keokuk to the tollway. I am looking now at the community profile um, for your budget. And, and this is what it says. Indian Head Park is a charming area that is committed to community, forestry, and love of nature. The village is characterized by rolling terrain with scores of mature trees in the park-like setting. Deer and other wildlife roam the area. Over the years, officials and residents of the village of Indian Head Park have continued to maintain a strong focus on the Native American tradition of respect and preservation of the environment. Indian Head Park is a tree city, USA, committed to the planting and preservation of trees. Well, that certainly went out the window when you sold that land from behind our homes. And I'm, you can tell, I'm upset about it. And it was underhanded. You didn't ask us, you didn't tell us. 
You cannot find anything on your website, in the reading notes, anything about the sale of this land. And what you did was wrong. And I can't believe that you people on the board allowed this to happen. And it's a travesty. And it needs, there's gonna be investigation about it. Just letting you know, because I don't, I don't think it was right. I think it was handled horribly, horribly. And how do you sleep at night? My comment. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you, Susan. And I forgot to say that we would ask that residents try to keep their comments under uh, three minutes. I'm looking to see if anybody else, Richard. Uh, yes, uh, I, I'm a neighbor of Susan and uh, I share some of her concerns, but uh, you know, the bulldozers have already moved. The trees have already been taken down. I'm, I'm kind of beyond how, how it happened <clears throat> and more towards uh, what we can do in the future. So you had mentioned the wall. So many of us are concerned that the, the wall that's being built might be high enough to uh, mute the newly uh, acquired highway sounds that we're, we're seeing. And uh, I know that there's a plan. The, the forest area has been completely defoliated uh, to put in the retention pond. And I know that there's on paper a plan to reseed some of that. And I'm, I'm hopeful or I'm asking that the town uh, be vigorous in looking at that replanting area to try to restore some of the vegetation that was wiped away when the construction crew came through. That's my comment. Thank you, Richard. Uh, looking to see anybody else. Uh, Susan, before um, we have a couple that Linda, can, are you prepared to read? We've received, I think, three comments. I can't hear her. You can't hear Linda. Make sure you're muted. Can't hear her. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first uh, comment is from Pete Brennan. I spoke with you right before the cleanup day to grab stickers, which went awesome. So I wanted to leave comment regarding the sheds. I bought a small shed from Home Depot. And if you could all be muted, thank you. From Home Depot about three years ago to hold my riding mower, unbeknownst that a permit was needed. Uh, sorry. Uh, it, it is needed as I have three kids with bikes and sporting equipment, and I'd like to have room for two cars in the garage for winter. I do not live in the Robert Bartlett subdivision and feel all residents of Indian Head Park should be treated equal regarding the shed issue, regardless of the size of your garage or whether you have a basement or not, as every situation and personnel needs are different. I do agree that there are some needs to be structured around the size of a shed and whether the lot is big enough to have a shed as some lots are small and would fringe on neighbors if the shed was too big. The entire village needs to be under the same rules and more accepting of sheds. Every person I've spoken to around my house is in favor of having sheds as they all have kids and need the storage. There seems to be a few people on the shed committee opposed to having sheds and those people held up the wishes of majority of the residents who want sheds 
on their property similar to surrounding communities, municipalities, excuse me. The village needs to keep the rules for all residents of the village and ease up on the requirements regarding permits to have a shed. Uh, next one is from Dale Holmquist. One, the agenda indicates that you are discussing an insurance building on the Mazer property. Shouldn't the newly elected board members have an opportunity to seek out the highest and best use for the entire triangle before parceling out in small sections? The new trustees indicated an interest in working towards positive triangle development in the future. It seems premature to move forward, in my humble opinion. Why would the village have only reasonable control of first floor tenants? It seems crucial to know what type of business might occupy the main level and any tax revenue benefits it might bring. It's important to know that a tenant could, wouldn't have a negative impact on her villa's image. Two, the 294 construction noise level has been terrible at times between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Does all the jackhammering need to be done overnight? There is no noise during the day, only re when residents are trying to sleep. Three, the broken guardrail on Wolf that I reported last year near 71st Street still has not been repaired. Will you follow up? Thank you. And lastly, this is from Rosemary Mazzola. For this evening's meeting, in my opinion, the village trustees have been very transparent in providing information regarding the tollway construction since it was announced, including the beginning of every board meeting and in the smoke signals. However, hearing and being notified of what was coming and actually hearing the constant noise of machinery and seeing the removal of so many trees were more than what many expected and now residents are angry. But what's done is done and I believe we should now focus on where to go from here. The Flag Creek area along Cochise, Pontiac, and Keokuk will need a rebirth, and I don't think the current amount of trees the tollway has proposed to be planted is enough. I would like the village to ask the tollway for more than double the amount of trees and foliage that they have suggested. It will take years to grow and fill in the area, but in my opinion, the wall and also the new additional fence that will be around the basin should not be visible to any owners who live on the Flag Creek side. These additional trees would also be helpful in buffering the noise to the entire Old Town community that will soon emulate from the new tollway expansion. I also think that getting a half million dollars for a piece of land we weren't using, would never use, and that the tollway could have just taken through eminent domain proceedings was not a bad thing. Again, Rose, Rosemary Mazzola. All right, anybody else? Uh, Ron, were you uh, raising your hand or just adjusting your camera? Sorry about that, Mayor. I was adjusting the camera. Thank you. All right, and Susan, uh, I think you used about a minute and a half so of your time. So if you want to speak shortly, please do so. You're muted. Okay, I'm back. Um, I just want to know, um, you know, the wildlife that lived back there in that plot of land that you underhandedly sold the tollway. Um, there's a fence now. And in the first communication from Shannon, she said it was temporary. And the last communication I got from Shannon said that the fence would be permanent. So now, the wildlife absolutely cannot go back there where they lived. All the deer lived back there, foxes, coyotes. That's the only place that they had that had no human interaction. The only solace that they had. And when you say that the village is committed to all this, I, I don't, I, I really don't think you thought about what you were doing and it was negligent and I'm disgusted. So that's all I can say. Thank you, Susan. Anybody else? I'm looking around. I don't see any Linda, anything new come in? Nope. Okay. 
Moving on to new business. Um, A, reappointment of Danielle Svetka and Diane Gomi Barnes to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the respective terms expiring A, April 18, 2024. Would somebody like to make a motion, please? I will make a motion to reappoint Danielle Svesta and Diane Gormley Barnes to the Planning and Zoning Commission for respective terms expiring April 18th, 2024. I'll second. <clears throat> Thank you, Rita and Sean. Uh, any questions from the trustees? Eileen, uh, you're muted. I see you're waving. Yes. Go ahead. I, okay. Is there a limit to the number of trustees that can serve on that commission? Um, Planning and Zoning Commission is made up of residents. There are no trustees that serve on that commission. So we have a liaison, and Rita is the lead liaison. And later in the meeting, uh, I will appoint Rita to stay the liaison. So Rita goes to the meetings, or most of them, uh, doesn't get a vote, but is there to answer questions and also observe what they do uh, so that if Rita wants to, she can report at a board meeting. Uh, sometimes the chairperson, Noreen Costello, comes to the board meeting, but no trustee serves on that commission. I Rita, did I do a good job of that? Yes, you did. I, I you. understand that. That um, Maybe you misunderstood my question. How many people, how many residents serve on that commission? Is there a limit to the number? Our ordinance is seven. Uh, John says our ordinance says seven. And of course, anybody can attend a planning and zoning meeting. Uh, I know several of the board meters members sometimes attend, but seven members of the planning and zoning commission. Just to be clear, I'm not asking about trustees. I'm asking about residents. So the maximum number is seven. And if we reappoint these two, will we have reached the seven? Yes. Okay. I'm okay. I'm. I just have to say I'm a little bit concerned because I'd like to learn more. But you've answered my questions. Thank you. I'm happy to answer any questions, and you know I might suggest attending a meeting or two. Uh, but whatever you know you would like. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? I don't see any. Um, Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Uh, Trustee Farrell Mayor. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Eck. Aye. Trustee Donnersberger. I abstain. Okay, let's see. Uh, Trustee Metz. And Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Okay, so that is a four to two vote. So it does pass. Uh, Pat says no, it's a four to one with one abstain. Is that right? But no, it's four. That, that is five to one then, five no. to. Well, trustee Metz doesn't count. So there was no two, there were, two people didn't vote against it. I think you said okay. it was. So it was and, and, four people and, that voted yes, and and there was one abstain. one absent and one abstain. Correct. There we go. So the motion. Thank you. Thank you for correcting that. The motion was approved. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the police department ten shared principles. Thank you for patiently waiting, Chief. That was only twenty minutes. I would have thought we would have been longer, but. No, 50 minutes. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> oh, thank you, David. Okay. Okay, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and everybody out in cyber world. How are you guys tonight? And not hearing anything. Mayor, no. Tom, Tom, we cannot hear the chief on the Zoom. Can you hear me? No. Chief, will you unmute the computer in front of you? How about now? Can everyone hear me? Can you hear the chief now on the Zoom? No, Pat says no. Hang on. Hang on. Use 
me. Can't go that way, John. I understand that. Stand by a moment. Again, we uh, seem to try something new at every meeting, and so we uh, haven't quite got all our act figured out, but we're uh, adjusting. And uh, I can see Chief now. Okay. We need, we need a microphone too, or just. Yeah. All right. Can you all hear the chief there? Hello. Yes. yes. That works Everybody well. Thank you. Okay. Very okay, good. Very good. Uh, uh, as I said, welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, and the rest of you out there in the cyber world, I just want to say. Um, this evening, I would like to make a little special presentation. I'd like to introduce uh, Chief Mitch Davis from the Hazel Crest Police Department, who is currently the uh, the brand new president with the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police. And what we're going to be doing is adopting what's called the 10 shared principles this evening uh, within the police department. And these 10 shared principles is a, a document where the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police and the NAACP came to an agreement uh, on principles to help enhance the relationship between law enforcement and the communities of color. And actually, I'm going to let Mitch go ahead and, you know, he's been sitting here real nice and patient. He's been in on it a lot longer than I have, and he can probably give a good background as to uh, what it's about. So let me introduce Mitch Davis. Thank you, Mayor, Manager, Trustees, Citizens. Um, I guess I should get in the camera. Uh, honored to be here. Uh, and uh, the town adopting the 10 share principles is a, is a major thing. So uh, as you heard, uh, Chief Stelter say, and he's a past president, so he carried this, this flag as well. Uh, after the incident in Ferguson, uh, the Illinois Chiefs and the NAACP came together and decided to come up with, uh, we, we went around the whole state of Illinois and we did uh, cafes and we talked to people in communities and asked them what they would like to see from law enforcement. And after a couple years of, go of doing this process, uh, we came up with agreed upon 10 shared principles. And uh, the 10 shared principles are just that. They are guidelines. They are guidelines for uh, the, the, the principles that your, your village can operate by through the police department, policy procedure, and otherwise. And with these 10 shared principles, once again, they are shared. So the things that are in the 10 shared principles are not just expectations of the police department, but also of the community. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the Chiefs Association had the foresight of trying to come together with, with communities that, that, that didn't necessarily always have the best experiences with law enforcement to develop this, this process. But this process works with everyone. So the adaptation of these 10 shared principles by the, you know, by your chief wanting to be able to bring that here is a major thing. And I applaud Mayor, you, uh, the board, and everybody here in Indian Head Park for the uh, adaptation of these principles. And I'm just, I just wanted to be here personally to congratulate you and applaud you for doing it. Thank you. Thanks, Mitch. And, um, in, and moving forward with these principles, as, as the chief said, ever since the uh, Michael Brown incident in Ferguson, uh, the Illinois Chiefs wanted to work with the communities of color and to try to enhance and improve our relationship. And what will be posted uh, in the police department on a wall is a poster with these principles. And if I can, I don't know if you can just see, I'll just give you a quick see here. This is a poster and it'll be hanging in the police department with the 10 shared principles on it. And I won't uh, take the time to read all 10, but I'll just read a few just to kind of give you an idea as to what they're about. Uh, the first one is that, we've, uh, that we value the life of every person and consider life to be the highest value. All persons should be treated with dignity and respect. This is another foundational value. Another one, a principle is we reject discrimination toward any person that is based on race, ethnicity, religion, color, nationality, immigrant status, sexual orientation, gender, disability, or familial status. And one more, uh, we endorse the values inherent in community policing, which includes community partnerships involving law enforcement, engagement of police officers with residents outside of interaction specific to enforcement of laws and problem solving that is collaborative, not one-sided. So that's just three of the principles that we lead. There are 10 altogether. 
And I have to tell you that this took two years in the making to even come up with this. And there were times where the association and the NAACP would go bicker back and forth over one word in one of these sentences. So it was a really important document to everybody. And there was a lot, a lot of time and effort and um, partnership put into this. And so we at Indian Head Park here are going to adopt these principles tonight. I will sign the bottom of this poster here and date it. And as I said, I will post it in the uh, police department. If anybody wanted to look further on it and kind of research it, if you go to the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police website, uh, they do have a whole thing on the 10 shared principles, and you can see all of those and read them, and, and you can see exactly what it's about. So it's a big step here for us as a police department, and we just want to, and this is a breathe. the nice thing is this is a breathing document, living breathing document, because this is not only law enforcement, but it's just people treating each other, as it said, with dignity and respect. That's what we should be doing anyways. And as law enforcement officers, the eyes are really on us, and this is what we should be doing every day when it comes to our jobs. So um, I have let the entire department know about this, and it will be up so they can read them, and then we'll talk about it. So if anybody has any questions uh, right now, please feel free. Otherwise, if you want to get a hold of me, email me, give me a telephone call. Uh, you want to come in and talk to me, no problem. We can sit there and talk about it. But I'm, I'm really excited about this, and I think it's a really a nice step in moving forward uh, within the police department as well as the organization. So thank you very much. Steve, I think you're up for our next item, your annual report. Mayor, will you, um... Thank you, Thank you Chief. Davis. Hey, Andy, can you hear me? Can you mute John's... Mayor, will you unmute? There. Yes. And I muted John's other computer. So. Oh, thank you, Andy. Okay. All right. You're up for item three, annual report. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay, um, yes, uh, <clears throat> another thing uh, this past year, or actually last month, um, I had, um, I put out an email to the troops to see if anybody would be volunteer to want to uh, take part in, in uh, creating an annual report for the police department last year. Um, this is something I've been doing since I've been a chief of police, and um, I Tried to look for one and talk to people around, but I guess apparently annual reports weren't done prior to me being here. And I thought it was very important that uh, you share, we come up with these reports to share with the community, to share with you as the board, and anybody and anybody that wants to look and to see what the village of Indian Head Park, their police department does uh, on their day-to-day -day and as an annual basis. So uh, in the, on your computers there in the board packet is a copy of the report. And as we go through it, the, oh, I, I should say, uh, of the officers that uh, responded, um, I actually got several. I was really surprised. I thought I was going to have to twist some people's arms, but they actually volunteered to do it. And I want to give kudos to Officer Mike Mayer, one of my part-timers, who really did the bulk of this work and put it together for me. And so um, he did a real nice job. So this, this report really details, as the, uh, the table of contents says, Anywhere from, you know, a message from myself. Uh, basically introducing the report, um, talking to the public and letting them know that, you know what, I'm very proud to be here as the chief of police. And uh, as we go forward and moving that, we will be, uh, I hate to use the word transparent. It's such a buzzword in today's world, but that's what we're being, is we're being transparent by putting this report out there. Uh, this report will be, uh, just so you know, on the website uh, tomorrow, and uh, we will put it out there as well. So that way anybody can look at it, people from the outside, people from the inside, whoever wants to, to view it. We really didn't have a mission statement here in town uh, with the police department, so we created this mission statement, and we developed a few core values in regards to respect, dignity, integrity, and fairness, and empathy. Uh, and... You know, Mike and I, and I should say Mike Kernick, myself, and Mike Mayer, 
uh, kind of uh, went over this and, and just developed this mission statement and core values, which we thought were very important to us. What we would want is leadership uh, and to trickle down to our troops as they go out there and perform their duties. We have a little bit of an, uh, an organizational chart here just to kind of outline what the police department is made up of and who the personnel there. Um, a couple of pictures of myself. Just recently, it's kind of nice. It was good timing because back in uh, October, um, I made acquaintance with a photographer who comes out and takes pictures for schools and teams and police departments. And I had him come out, and he did, he photographed every everybody in the department. I couldn't really find any pictures of officers. And you know how sometimes when we give kudos to officers and they got a nice picture of them in their uniform with a flag behind them. We wouldn't have that possibility. Well, now that we have that possibility because we got pictures taken and the officers were able to get their own and they could bring their families in and do family pictures if they want. And it was all no, no cost to the village and it's just uh, the officers bought the packages through the photographer. But he gave me a free, um, a free framed uh, picture of the entire department, which is a couple of pictures here past uh, our new hires who we uh, hired last year in 2020. We hired four brand new part-timers, uh, real good guys as well. Um, so we got the entire department picture there in the, in the uh, report. And at the bottom, the 450 years of experience, I thought was pretty clever on Mike's part to put that in there. So uh, that's our police department. If you want to take a look at them, if, uh, kind of a motley looking crew sometimes, but they're all looking real good and they're pretty uniforms and, and we're moving uh, forward with them. So they're a good, good group of officers here. Next we have the <coughs> excuse me. Next we have the the top UCR codes, which are uniform. UCR stands for Uniform Crime Reporting, which is kind of talked about down there in the paragraph. And he did a real good pie chart. I don't know how he got all those colors in there, but um, he just did a nice pie chart, pie chart of all the different uh, categories in regards to uh, the crimes that were being reported, the crimes that were committed, and and whatnot. Uh, a big part of our, our duties around here every day are premise checks. Um, we have the ability to not be very busy at times with calls for service, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. So to keep the officers going, we have them conduct premise checks and community contacts. And so you can see that they uh, did about 9,000 premise checks last year, a little more than that. And that's basically checking in on businesses the uh, midnight shift going and, and rattling doors and checking on vacation watches and people's homes and things like that. So, you know, we just want to keep uh, keep our community as safe as we can. The citations uh, issued is next up, and there's a nice little pie chart as long as number totals. And our officers do a good job in getting out there and stopping people and, uh, you know, issuing various citations. And we're not... Uh, we're not crazy people. I believe in I believe in doing the right thing, and I believe in common sense. And if somebody deserves a ticket, fine. But you know what? You can always give them the benefit of doubt because a, a verbal warning or a written warning can go a long way with somebody. Um, and so I, I'm not out there hounding them to write a lot of tickets. I'm just my my mantra is to stay busy. And if you got a nice citation in your hands, but you know what? If the person's got a good story, or you're feeling that it's okay, go ahead and issue that verbal warning or that written warning. I mean, that, like I said, that can go a long way with somebody, especially if they're having a lousy day. You can pick them up. So, But anyways, these are the totals of the citations that were issued last year. Um, we got some arrests in last year as well. We got some nice felony arrests, or a f nice felony arrest uh, last year. We've already got a few of them this year. I was, I've been thinking the last couple of months, we got some, a couple of good ones for the last couple of months, which will be in next year's report. Um, but we do arrest people on warrants and on misdemeanor charges as well. And recently we've uh, added the, one since I got here, the administrative tow fee policy, which on these arrests when we tow somebody's car, we charge them $500 to get their car back. And last week we actually had three in one week, uh, which was a pretty good deal. So uh, we'll be getting some revenue from the arrests that the officers make and towings of the car that they do. The next page is a, a professional membership page, and this is the organizations that we belong to as a police department. Uh, the 
you can see we belong to the South Suburban Major Crimes Task Force and the Major Crimes Assistance Team. These are two very important task forces that we need to have as a small police department because if we have a major crime in town, uh, we don't have the ability to and the resources to go out there and investigate this thing to the fullest and to try to apprehend these people uh, because of, of manpower issues. So the South Suburban Major Crimes Task Force is, uh, task force is one of our uh, task forces that we belong to that they would come out for, say, a homicide or a serious offense, whether we had a serious arson case, a sexual assault case, uh, whatever it may be, uh, we would call them out and they would handle it and they would come out with a team of about 16 or 18 investigators. They've got a whole uh, set up within their task force. They have state's attorney liaisons. They have the ability to get the arrest warrants as quickly as they need them, the search warrants, things like that. So it's very important to small departments like us to be part of these uh, task forces that are comprised of all these different uh, experienced veteran investigators uh, from surrounding communities. We belong to the West Suburban Detectives Association. Uh, myself and, or um, I just myself, I belong to the International Association of Chiefs of Police. Myself and Mike Koenig belong to the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police. Um, we have the West Suburban Chiefs of uh, Police, and what that is is the county, every county pretty much in the state has what they call their County Police Chief Association, but Cook County being so big, they have three within Cook County. They have a North Suburban, they have a West Suburban, and they have a South Suburban. Unfortunately, we are right on the line, the borderline of the West Suburban and the South Suburban, so we belong to both. Um, so that way we can keep up on what's going on in basically two-thirds of, of Cook County. So uh, we do have, and then we have monthly meetings, and there's guest speakers, and there's issues whenever the laws change, whenever county law changes, the state's attorney's office has a change, they send people out. So we have a monthly meeting where we go to a lunch, and then we have guest speakers to talk about an array of different topics. We also have uh, ILEAS is a Illinois law enforcement alarm system, and this is another task force where they would come out if we were to, let's say we were to have to uh, one of these demonstrations out here because something happened and we have a couple of hundred people out here demonstrating in that. We would we belong to Ileas who has what they call a mo uh, mobile field force. And we I would call them and say, hey, I need assistance. I need a mo mobile field force out here. I got a demonstration going on. And then they would send out their troops. There's hundreds of P officers that belong to this who do riot control, who do demonstrations that have all the equipment and they would come out in force to help us out. Um, training, uh, this department is a very heavily trained police department. Mike Koenig does a great job in getting the officers trained here and runs with that. And uh, we belong to the various training units, the Police Law Institute, that's a computer-based training that the officers do in, within the station. And over the last several years, our legislators have made requirements of law enforcement to have certain amount of training um, every year and s in different categories and different topics. The Police Law Institute has been so kind as to put all those requirements and those mandates into the computer training. So when an officer does their training every month, we are covered in regards to the mandates that the state has required us to do. Well, there's also a couple of different training, the Northeast Multi-Regional and um, the South Suburban Law Enforcement Academy. Those are uh, groups that have one-day trainings for this, whether it be DUI, traffic stops, criminal law, you know, supervisory schools and things like that, and we can send officers too. And so there's a lot of training, and it's, it's, we pay an a annual fee for most of these, and then you just send them, the training is free after that, and we send them to the courses and the classes. Uh, the FBI National Academy Association, I belong to that. Uh, back in 2010, I went to the FBI Academy uh, for the command level, of, uh, so they now have a a alumni association they call it here within the state of Illinois and so they'll have uh, monthly trainings as well I don't necessarily go to all the trainings I do try to attend a few of them um, but then there's also training available there the next page is kind of some of the topics that we would do and, and, and review and um, we do uh, firearm qualifications several uh, times a year but you know the law the law updates are a big one the criminal law updates the use of force and we do hazmat, CPR, AEDs. As a matter of fact, next month, or this month, Mike, is it taser training this month? Next month. 
Next month, we'll have the entire department being refreshed on TASER because that's a requirement as far as being recertified every couple of years. So we will be combining forces with Burr Ridge, and uh, they have an instructor there. So we will be going to sending our officers over there to get uh, TASER recertification. Um, but you can see there's a whole array of, of topics that we have to cover, and, and it's getting worse. And so it's we've got to really stay on top of everything that, that they want us to do. Um, the next page, professional development training, just another uh, thing. I'm more into training. Then we got to we'll throw a couple pictures in there. We don't want to bore everybody with just reading some stuff. So uh, firearms qualifications, you know, officers love to shoot their guns. And so we uh, get a chance to go out and shoot at the range. There's outdoor ranges at the Lamont Police Department as well as the Department of Corrections by Stateville Prison. And they have several outdoor ranges there that we utilize five, six times a year. And we run our officers through all kinds of training, not only just shooting, but tactics, <coughs> um, malfunction drills, uh, conducting stops and, and seeking cover, and all kinds of uh, different array of topics. So it's not just going out and blowing off some rounds and then going home. But no, we're, we're trying to train these guys into tactics, safety, um, transition, whether you go from your gun to your baton or you go from your gun to your taser, things like that that we, uh, we work on. So... Um, they got, they, they, and the officers really love it. And then coming up to the end, the community involvement, we always, we like to get out in the community. Officers love to do that, and I know the people like to have us there, and we appreciate it. And we will go anywhere, anytime here for any reason whatsoever. If anybody wants us, uh, we'll be happy to do that. So those are just a few pictures of the community involvement. And then the last page, uh, the 2020 annual report prepared by the following well. You could pretty much scribble out myself and Mike's name. Mike Mayer is the guy that did this, and he's the one that deserves the kudos and credits for it. So um, I have no comparison. Uh, a lot of times in these reports and the stats, we'll do comparisons. But this is the first one here, and I plan on, as long as I'm here, I'll be doing them every year. So next year's report will be the same thing. But then we'll also have a comparison from last year to that, you know, to be 2021 to 2022 and things like that. So we'll have comparisons. I'm sorry to bore you with that, but... Uh, that's the annual report that we've had prepared, and as I said, it'll go on the website tomorrow, and if anybody's got any questions, great, but it's my pleasure to do it, and I uh, really enjoy being here, and uh, I feel like God put me in this position here because uh, that's where he wanted me, and I'm, I'm glad because I really enjoy uh, being here. I enjoy the town. I enjoy the people I work with, and uh, have a great time, so thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, any questions from the trustees for Chief Stelter? Uh, Eileen, Steve, you may have to be up again. Eileen, go ahead. I don't have a question. I, I just want to thank you for the report. I did read through it. I, don't I thought it was. Oh, hang on a second, please, Eileen. Uh, how do we get sound? Okay. Eileen, you want to try again, please? Sure. Um, Chief, I just wanted to thank you for that report. I had an opportunity to look through it. It's thorough, and uh, it looks like your department's doing a lot. I also love the shared principles. I commend you on that, uh, and I look forward to working with you in the future. But the other thing I want to mention is I don't know if you're aware of this, but this happens to be National Police Week. Oh, yeah. So I think yeah. which was established in 1962 by a joint um, resolution by Congress. So I, and the purpose of it was not just to support police, but to honor those who have died in the line of duty. And I'm sure everybody here, the mayor, the trustees, um, we all need to take a moment to think about those people uh, who have served us and, and died doing so. Uh, but at the same time, uh, yep. the police department's great. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you for bringing that up uh, with the National Police. There should be something on our – oh, I, uh, recently I just started a uh, – one of my officers is our social media officer, and we have a Facebook page now with the police department. So if you guys are Facebookers, please go on and, and join and, and be a friend. But there I should be uh, – I talked to him yesterday, and it better be on there. I'm not a Facebooker Mayor, myself. Mayor, we can't oh, – I can't oh, hear you again, Steve. I'm not sure I'm what sorry, we I'm did. Sorry. Did they miss did that, they whole that whole thing? thing? <laughs> Thank you for Thank bringing, you up, bringing it up this week. week. Um, Can I'm, you hear I'm, Steve now? I just we, uh, uh, no, can't still hear you. No, we're good. We can. Yeah. Oh, you can now. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, um, 
Yes, the, yes. The, uh, just recently, just I made a social, social media, media officer, 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 Steve, Steve Rubin, on a midnight, midnight shift. shift. And we have a Facebook page now, so if you're a Facebooker, please go on there and uh, go ahead and be a friend. But there should be something on there. I told him, talked to him yesterday, and he worked last night. He was going to put something on about Police Week uh, on our Facebook page. But every year, you're right, the week of November 11th to that whole week is Police Week. And on the 13th, they have the big candlelight vigil out at Washington, D.C. They've got a beautiful law enforcement memorial out there in Washington, D.C. That was just recently completed. And they do a ceremony that'll just send chills down your spine. And they bring all the families to Washington, D.C. of the slain officers the year prior. And they hold a whole weekend with them, a big cer the ceremony, um, the activities that they do, the picnics. The uh, When I was in the FBI Academy in uh, 2010, it was the spring during this time, and they brought a whole busload of these people to the FBI Academy, and we had a whole day's events, and they had games and like a big carnival, and they had the FBI SWAT team out there and the helicopters, and I mean, just a, a day of festivities. So thank you for bringing that up, but yes, it is National uh, Police Week this week. All right, any other questions or comments for Chief? I, I would like to thank the Chief and to Mike um, for putting it together and that it was extremely informative and very transparent as far as what the police department is doing here in Indian Head Park. So I just wanted to give you thanks for that. Any other comments from the board? All right, Steve, I think... That's it. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm muted again. Why did it doesn't take doesn't long to mute you? Um, um, and, and lastly, lastly my citizens police, police, police academy starts next starts. Wednesday. So, um, if any of you are interested in coming, there's still time. Just let me know, and uh, we can get you in. But uh, ten weeks every Wednesday night, and we'll be doing a citizens police academy. So I'll give you periodic updates when I come to the board meetings. Steve and Mike, and I think you said the report is on the website. It will be, it will be and maybe you'll put a Facebook link to the website URL, right? All right, thank you. And David, do we need to unplug this again? Okay. All right, we're moving on to the next item, D, uh, and John is bringing his uh, laptop back. This is the first look at the development on uh, Joliet Road, the Triangle PUD. And John, after you get back up and operational, he is uh, getting ready. Again, we're uh, trying to change the meeting somehow every uh, month to make ourselves uh, challenged. So John, when you're ready. I'm ready. So this is not scheduled for a vote tonight, um, some background. When we established the plan unit development for the triangle, we set up some criteria for development. And the first step in the development process is that the petitioner, potential pet petitioner appear before the village board to get a feeling if the development use is appropriate for the triangle. Uh, we're not looking specifically at building profiles. We're not looking at site plan at all. The concept of the building or the business that will be going into the development process, into the triangle. Further in the development process, the petitioner will have to appear before the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, through a public hearing and then through the commission for uh, a review and a vote, and then ultimately a recommendation to the village board, which will be the final action by the village. At any point, the Planning and Zoning Commission can meet to discuss this over multiple meetings. The board can meet and discuss this over multiple meetings. So it is really meant to be a thoughtful process with community involvement. Uh, that being said, we have. Um, two potential developments on in the triangle. One is on Wolf Road, I'm sorry, one is on Joliet Road, the first one we're looking at tonight. At the parcel south of Joliet Road and west of Vine Street. So we call it the Mazer property. It is a vacant parcel um, in the triangle area. 
The second piece we are looking at is on Wolf Road at the very southern end of the triangle, immediately north of the tollway. Um, so it's, it's south of Indian Head Plaza in the Salon Suites. It's also a vacant parcel. So you have um, an insurance company who is looking to move into the triangle to create a, uh, a two-story uh, office building with them taking the upper level of the building for the insurance office and um, retail or a commercial use in the lower level. And Andy, if you could put up that um, screen, the, um, the slide that I gave you. Um, that is a sample of the building that might be going up on Joliet Road. Now, this is just a sample of a building. I would encourage the board members to chime in as to design thoughts, the quality of development, um, the higher level view of what you want to see in the triangle. It's an office building. Um, and so that is kind of where we are right now. So I would like the board to kind of give their thoughts as to if this is an appropriate land use within the plan unit development uh, concept and your thoughts on what you'd like the building to look like. Again, we, the plan unit development is kind of a, it's an overlay zoning district um, for B3 zoning, uh, which is, would allow for, for something such as this. But it also has a give and take with the board where you can require a higher level of development quality, if you wish, uh, in exchange for um, an easement on setback requirements uh, or just development parking requirements, things of that nature. So it, it really is a give and take with the village and, and the developer. So I would ask the board for, for comments and I will forward these comments to the petitioner and start the process rolling. Uh, any on the uh, board have any comments at this point? Yeah, Jen, Jen, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, please. Uh, Rita? Yeah, Jen, um, can you, just to fill in the new board members, can you give us the time frame of the PUD when that was done? We started the PUD about three years ago. Okay. Um, and the property has somewhat languished over the years. I know I've been, I'm coming up on six years with the village and aside from the dome being torn down and three houses on Wolf Road on the south end of Wolf Road being torn down, there's been no activity at all in the triangle. We have had some nibbles. Um, one nibble was a car wash, uh, which kind of went through this process also, along with the gas station that they came to the board and the board did not give them, and I apologize for the, the phrase, they did not get a warm fuzzy from the village board. And so they were somewhat discouraged from proceeding forward. They could have if they wanted to, but they were, the reception was not as, as, as warm as they would have liked. And they thought that there was a risk with development. So they proceeded not to move forward with, with development. So that is kind of the process. So with the PUD, we met, we talked about this for almost a year, I think. Right, with brought, the Planning and Zoning Commission. With the Planning and Zoning, we had a public hearing on this. We brought in all of the property owners from the Triangle to talk about what their vision was for the Triangle because more often than not, uh, development, will happen with somebody who knows what's going on in that parcel itself. It's kind of like um, how you pick up friends you, through other friends. So we did involve the public greatly, the property owners, the Planning and Zoning Commission. We had a, a series of public meetings on this and we also involved the village board as well. So we, we spent a lot of time on this and we had an outside consultant who tried to rein us in with um, our wishes to have a Starbucks or a restaurant of, you know, of, of type because the owners of the property were simply asking too much money for their property and it just, development was not gonna happen. Uh, the rate of return was too, too low for anything serious to happen. So I would love to see a Starbucks there, but I don't think it's ever gonna happen. Well, now so one of was, the, the um, driving forces too is hopefully to generate sales tax by correct. attracting 
certain businesses that would generate sales tax for the business as well, or excuse me, for the village as well as kind of give that area an upscale feel, kind of like a village center. I think that that was a big part of that as well, because I was at those meetings. And now what is what type of revenue would this insurance building bring? Other than property taxes for the insurance uh, building itself, it would have to be a retail component on the lower level. And we've never really thought about having anything but retail on a lower level. We've never really envisioned retail on any of the upper levels. At one point, we actually thought about a mixed use development where you would have retail on the lower level and residents on the upper level. Uh, sort of like what we have in the two uh, brick buildings immediately south of Indian Head Plaza, uh, where Blando uh, Jewelers is, and then we have condos above that. Um, the petitioner or the insurance company has indicated retail, but they have not indicated any type of retail. And that is of interest to me, whether or not they can actually fill the lower level with retail, with a retail component. Thank you. So that is something that should be mentioned tonight as part of your preliminary comments. And, and again, yes. somebody was under the impression that this was for a final vote. We are nowhere near a final vote. In right. fact, it's not even slated for a vote tonight. All right, Sean, I think you had. Yeah, um, the, the uh, picture that you showed uh, as a sample, I, I like the idea of the second floor being business. Um, in, in going through this in my own mind in the last few years, I thought it would be very difficult to have any kind of um, uh, uh, personal residence condo uh, on a second, third floor with both 294 and I-55 there, you know, who would want to live to have that literally right out their back door window. Uh, so I love the idea of, of business on the second and third floor uh, and uh, commercial on the, on the first. But the, the picture itself is, is not at all what I was hoping for. It would be more of the you know, uh, Burr Ridge area they have. Uh, I think more inviting with um, businesses that you could see what's, what's uh, located on the first floor with the sample that they submitted. You know, there's, there's no way to know what's located in there unless you happen to go inside. Um, having said that, the, the one thing that did pop up in, in my mind when you were talking about a Starbucks, have we had any discussion or any thought in businesses that go in there, if this was to work out, what it might do to the current businesses located in the triangle? I know in the past we've talked about, um, you know, we don't need another hair salon because there's multiple hair salons located there. But if we were to get a Starbucks, I think that that would horribly impact Oak Pantry in a negative fashion. So uh, what kind of control does the board have in the future of um, what actually goes in there when we get to that point uh, to to try and protect the current businesses that we have in that area? Well, I think that with the plan unit development ordinance itself, you do have that ability. And I think that this is part of the discussion that we have. Um, do you want a Starbucks or do you not want a Starbucks? That, that's a part of the question. And I think if, our, if I'm incorrect, our village attorney will chime in and tell me that I'm wrong, um, hopefully quickly, so I don't go down a bad path. No, um, I mean, you, you're right from a land use perspective. I mean, I, I wouldn't state we don't want a Starbucks or we don't want a particular type of coffee shop, but in, ter- in terms of evaluating overall land use, I think that's an appropriate consideration in the, pl- in the plan unit development and the special use that's required for any type of use to go in there, but not specific to a certain user, if, if that makes sense, Trustee Kennedy. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to use Starbucks. It was just brought up before, but, but just uh, from a general standpoint, trying to help um, you know, not have a, a negative impact to the current businesses that are already there. Uh, so I'm just glad to know that, that we do have some flexibility there, but other than the, the, the type of building that was shown, I like the idea of business on the second or top floors, because again, I don't think we're going to get a lot of residential in, 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 in that type of design, um, uh, with then regular commercial on the, uh, first floor. So, so far I'm in favor. Thank you, Sean. Any other comments from the board? Yeah, this is Brent. 
Brenda, and I would like to say that I agree with Sean that I would be, as far as the building goes, I would like something more like either Bridge, Western Springs, or even going into Hinsdale to make it a little bit more family orientated. And that I'm all for as far as having a commercial business on the the second floor, but as far as the, the first floor, I would, would like to see retail, family orientated uh, business in, in businesses uh, going in there and that because that was like kind of like the vision that we were looking at before and that because we would kind of like to have that that triangle more family orientated and you know bring in other uh, revenue etc in there but also to make it you know a lot more fun and bringing people down to their corner you know not even from just not from just from our community but from other communities as well. Thank you, Brenda. Any other comments? Eileen? Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with both Sean and Brenda. I, I just, the building um, is not what I was envisioning um, as I like something that looks a little bit more sophisticated and less like a, a car dealership. But I like the idea of the, the, the business going in there. And as to the first floor, I understand in Burr Ridge, a lot of those stores like Chico's and a lot of the little um, stores that cater to women have left because they're doing something else with the strip mall over there. They're going to make it into a uh, pedestrian and put in a lot more restaurants and entertainment. So I'm wondering if that would be an opportunity to go after some of those stores, although we'd have to get some kind of a hook um, and build out more in order to, I think, get some of those uh, little boutique stores to go in there, but it looks like an opportunity anyway. Thank you, Eileen. Any other comments? And you can come back, Eileen, Charlie, and you're muted, Charlie. Got to get on mute first. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that the last three uh, trustees uh, accent what my thought is as well is uh, uh, a building looking more like uh, what you've got in Burr Ridge or Western Springs would be more appropriate. Plus, the, the building that was pictured there certainly didn't lend itself to any retail on the first uh, floor. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure how well thought out that uh, presentation was, but uh, certainly retail on the first floor will provide the opportunity for sales tax revenue in addition to the, um, the real estate uh, taxes that we might uh, receive uh, having two stories. Uh, second story is uh, a nice touch. Agree with uh, Sean on that thought. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other comments? Yeah, I just want to say, I think that that parcel of land has sat empty for way prior to the time that we did the PUD. And it certainly doesn't help the village in its current state. So I think, you know, being open to a business coming in is a good idea if the design is, is right. Yeah, and can I just follow up with that, um, John? Does that, will it include the parking lot and the, um, the vegetation, is the one of a better word to go in there um, to ensure that it's just not a building stuck in the middle with the parking lot, but there's some uh, degree of um, landscaping. landscaping. Landscaping is a required component Okay. of any development that goes in. And that's, that's where you really get to flex your muscle right. with okay. requirement on landscaping. Okay. Again, um, and, and Rita, thank you for reminding, the, reminding me of this. When we um, were developing the PUD, one of the goals of the PUD was to have a family or an individual be able to spend several hours in the triangle, whether or not you're shopping or you're dining or getting your hair done or hair cut, um, it's a place to go where you can park your car, walk to a couple different stores, have a meal, do another couple stores and then leave. So really we want it to be a small destination within the village. So that is one of the things that we also want to see. Well, I mean, let's be realistic. You're not going to get that if all you do is put an insurance company over here. It's I agree. Of I agree. But for the concept of an insurance sure. office on a second level and, and establish where we know what's going in retail on the lower level. That's our goal. 
All right, other feedback for John to give to the business. All right, I don't hear any. John, do you want to move on to the I'll next move one? On. Um, and the second piece is owned or is um, being sought by Ron Vary, who owns the Driftwood. He is actually on this call tonight. So I'm going to, Andy, if you could put up the next slide. Um, and, Sean, uh, and Ron just sent me this uh, a short time ago. So I don't, yep, that's where it's going. No, nope. next slide, Andy. That is where it's going. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, south of Wolf Road. All right, there we go. That is a, uh, and Ron, if you want to talk a little bit about uh, your concept and please take in mind the comments that we had on the uh, Joliet Road parcel. Ron, are you there? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. Um, we have envisioned uh, for a couple of months now a four-story building for the parcel, mixed use. Um, for those of you who know the Driftwood Lounge, uh, we are so very grateful to the entire village board and, and the, the community members and whatnot for supporting us. We have proven uh, the need for a place like ours in the village, and we want to take that to the next level on the ground floor of this building. Um, when I say mixed use, I'm referring to something that would accommodate a bigger and better driftwood um, along with predominantly medical space surrounding it. Uh, at the moment, we envision 50% of that ground floor to be uh, a surgery center. The other 50%, uh, the driftwood or something like it. The hours of operation would be polar opposite of one another. Uh, the, the surgery center and medical uses above would basically end their day at 5 p.m. Um, on a daily basis, and they're not open on the weekends. So as you can imagine, the Driftwood Lounge, as we know, is rather busy on the weekends. Uh, so technically, uh, the two would be like ships passing in the night. The, the hours of operation would never really conflict. Um, aside from the daytime business, uh, the medical users that we have spoken to love the idea of a food and beverage component being in the building because in the wintertime, uh, quote unquote, we wouldn't have to leave the property to go to lunch. So uh, lots of synergies there. And, um, you know, just looking forward to, to, uh, to improving that parcel. Uh, it's obviously been in need of a facelift for quite some time and we would be very proud to be uh, involved in that process. Thanks, Ron. Um, questions either for Ron or feedback from the board about this proposal? Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I have a quick question. So this is, this is on Wolf Road, um, just north of the bridge and just south of what's already developed. Is yes, sir. That, that is correct. Okay. That is correct. Yes. So getting off of 294, you would drive right straight into that area. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Indeed. Okay. Thank you. So Thank you. Clarifying my mind, it's the parcel of land that's vacant? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. And uh, the restaurant that you envision, is it a restaurant or a bar? It's a, a re restaurant lounge. That is correct. Restaurant lounge. So it'd be, I mean, right now the Driftwood is a bar. Right, right? now, yes. Well, only because we are in negotiations with uh, investors to bring back food, uh, whether it be our own kitchen or another method. Um, we started out with Capri serving food at Driftwood, and we are looking forward to a hybrid of that situation coming back. So, um, but to your point, the new location would absolutely uh, have a menu from day one, and we look forward to that because it's something that we're lacking right now at the existing place. Would you have any idea in terms of um, the number of people who would be working or in that building? Because 
I, I'm having a hard time envisioning a four-story building on that parcel with parking. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. And it's, it's a valid point at first glance. Um, however, I am a licensed architect. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that, but um, having done this many times over, uh, the, the parking that the parking demand for a medical use is really rather light in when you consider the size of the building, there are other uses that would demand a much, much higher parking. Um, in the case of medical or analogous to say like a gymnasium or whatnot, there's really uh, only about one space for every 250 square feet. In many cases, it ends up producing a light parking requirement. Now, if they were, uh, if the hours of operation at peak uh, were coinciding with one another, then yes, we would have a problem. There's no doubt. But because of the fact that the driftwood uh, really obviously would not get busy until after 5 p.m. and the medical would be closing at 5 p.m., you know, all 107 or whatever we have here, um, all 107 or so parking spaces would be devoted toward uh, say the driftwood at nighttime and the medical during the day. And you don't foresee this as a problem for the, uh, during the day. I mean, I just, you know, I've, I've gone to DuPage medical clinic and, and, you know, in a similar setting and, and you, you drive around forever trying to find a parking space. It seems to me. Um, yeah. So yeah. I don't know that, you know, I, I I'd have to look at that further. I think. Sure. Sure. I'll give you an example though for the operating, uh, the surgery center with only three operating rooms on that ground floor, um, that alone, you know, adjacent or um, upper floor uh, synergistic uses or office space for the very doctors that are on the ground floor, they're really crossover uses that don't end up using as many spaces as a completely different user would use. For instance, uh, a CPA on the second floor versus a doctor. Yes, the CPA would need parking for his staff and his clientele. But in this case, the doctor and the patient and the staff are all one and the same. They're utilizing part of the ground floor and part of the second floor. So as we say, they're crossover spaces that don't end up multiplying. They actually end up uh, you know, creating a, a more laxed uh, parking demand. In addition to that, however, we have spoken to, uh, you know, local valet companies. We have given thought to where could we park in an overflow scenario. And as we've done already with the Driftwood, um, the golf course has been more than accommodating. Uh, as we know, there is plenty of industrial parking uh, on the south side of the highway. And uh, the, our adjacent neighbor to the north uh, we have been in touch with ownership. They've already allowed us to overflow uh, at times on the weekends for driftwood uh, with no long-term agreement in place. But of course, with the new building going forward, uh, hopefully that would, uh, that would happen in short order. We would sign an agreement with them that would say, you know, in the event that we need overflow parking, here would be our monthly lease rate, et cetera. Thanks. Have you talked to... Um Medical groups, I mean, I'm assuming you're going to have to get a group in there rather than fill it by individual physicians. Have you oh, talked? yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, indeed. Yes, we have. Um, I have um, conversations ongoing with two groups at the moment. Unfortunately, I cannot disclose their names. However, uh, at the proper time, I can assure you they are doing uh, surgery centers across the country in one case. Uh, four or five states as we speak, and their entire book of business is nothing but surgery centers and medical. So we would not be parceling this out uh, one tenant at a time. Um, they already have a brochure in circulation that would basically lease up the entire building immediately. I am curious whether or not you would be um, seeking for a cannabis license within this particular building? At the moment, there has not been talk of that. Um, to give everyone a flavor of the type of tenants that have been mentioned thus far, um, it's, 
I don't want to say the, the brand Athletico, uh, but it's a physical therapy tenant uh, analogous to Athletico. Um, uh, an, an ortho has been mentioned, uh, potentially some type of dentist uh, or dermatologist, obviously the surgery center. Uh, so tenants of that nature thus far. Ron, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. When it comes to the uh, driftwood type of business that you would have in there, um, on, on your plans or thoughts, do you have have you allocated or allotted any room for any type of outdoor seating and or music? I know you guys are, you know, have always kind of been big on music in there, either indoors yes. or outdoors. Uh, but is that Thank part you. of the plan right now? Absolutely, um, and a couple reasons why. Obviously, unfortunately, we learned the hard way that um, pandemics happen. And um, <laughs> the next time one comes around, we are going to design the new place so that it will not affect us. Um, we will have carry out. Uh, we will be including in our updated plans uh, accommodations for a drive through. Much of the front wall or side wall will be operable garage doors. Um, I don't know if everyone's familiar with the 10 foot rule uh, in Illinois, but if your wall is, is permeable, if say you have a garage door lining your frontage uh, for your restaurant, if that entire front wall opens, you were allowed and still are allowed to seat people indoors regardless, as long as it's within the first 10 feet of that wall. Um, and our thought is to answer your question, let's bring uh, let's tie the outdoor patio to our dining somehow so that we can accommodate music um, in a way that's, you know, responsible to the village. We would probably end up uh, orienting that uh, to toward the tollway so we can basically um, create a, uh, a sound buffer, if you will, and cancel some of that noise out. Uh, but yes, to answer your question, all of the above are definitely part of our plans since we've uh, thankfully proven the model at Driftwood One. John, yeah, with that being said, um, and the plans for Wolf Road with the shared use path uh, that we're looking you know, at in phase one, um, there could be on a Friday and Saturday night a uh, fair amount of foot traffic going over Joliet Road. Uh, so I just want to Keep that in mind as we go further on this, that if, if, if that's what Ron or somebody else is looking at, that we really need to make sure, you know, because this goes back to those those uh, islands that were removed a couple of years ago for the paved trucks that were coming in and out that now we'll probably have to go back. Uh, so I just I, I want to mention that kind of go on record that we need to be very cognizant that going forward, if a business like that does go in, uh, I think we could have a, a, a lot of foot traffic potentially uh, coming through there. Because this is a county road and they control um, access to, to parcels, we would have to bring them in, in as part of this discussion also. Sure, sure. All right, other uh, comments, feedback, either to John or Ron, since he's on the uh, line. Um, I just did get a, a text from a resident who is concerned about noise. Um, and that is part of our review process. So for that resident, um, we will be looking at, at noise, especially if, if outdoor uh, dining or music is contemplated. All right, other uh, trustee comments? Okay, Mayor, do you mind if I, if I comment yeah. on that last one? Go ahead. Uh, as, as we've done uh, throughout, the last year and a half, we will, of course, continue to work with the village to minimize. I know we had uh, decibel levels checked and whatnot with the help of Mr. DeRocher. We will continue down that path, of course. All right, Ron, we may be uh, nearing the end of our questions. Is there anything else that you wanted to add to either your presentation or a specific question? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. I, I appreciate everyone's time and opportunity. All right, I'll give one last uh, opportunity before we move on to the next agenda item. Any, any trustee? 
All right, Ron, thank you very much for being patient and uh, waiting through the meeting. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Okay, that uh, ended item E, the first look development on Wolf Road Triangle PUD. Next item is uh, item F, um, an ordinance 2021-06 sale of surplus property. Would a trustee like to make a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Eileen makes a motion to adopt ordinance 20. 2107, sorry, I may have had it wrong, an ordinance 07, on, 07 allowing for the sale of surplus property. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. second. I think okay. that was Rita. Brenda, your uh, microphone is a little lighter, so I'm giving that to Rita, no offense. Um, okay, any questions for John? Or John, did you want to talk to this? I would like to, thank you. So for the public and our new trustees, whenever the village has equipment that we're not throwing away in the garbage that has some value and we wish to sell it. Uh, we just can't go out and do it. We need an ordinance or special permission from the village board to sell uh, the material. In this case, we're selling uh, items that we've pulled out of the ground uh, with the water system, uh, specifically some piping and some other water system associated items uh, that do have residual value and we will be seeking out three quotes from scrappers and we go with the highest quote. And if the board passes the ordinance, which I recommend them doing, we will initiate that process. Uh, once we sell uh, the material, um, proceeds go back into the fund from where it came from. So if it's water related, it goes to the water fund. If it's not water related, it goes to the general fund. So it's not like we'll, we'll sell the money and put it in um, a kitty for, pizza or a slush fund, so to speak. So we have to do this legally and uh, I'm seeking your permission. In, Charlie, in uh, years past, when we've sold something like computers or police cars, we've had either the mileage or the make and model or you know what kind of computer it was. Uh, this, we had pictures uh, in the board packet and it looked to me like scrap metal. Correct, and that will uh, be, that's part of the ordinance, the picture itself. All right, any and questions about this? Question. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, two questions. Uh, one, this ordinance is just limited to those items that are in the picture, John? Correct, correct. And so second I'll question two, is... I'll do two of these a year. Okay. And second question is, rough estimate now as to uh, what you think we might get, uh, something like that, over or under a hundred, uh, over or under a thousand dollars? Oh, under, under a thousand, more than a hundred, um, but oh, we will get three written quotes and we'll uh, present it as, as information to the board in a future meeting. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote, please? And if you're muted, please unmute for the vote. Let's see if I am. Can you hear me? Yes. I met the trustees. Right. Oh. You, Clerk Allison. <laughs> okay. Uh, Trustee Dornisberger. Aye. A trustee Farrell Mayer. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Eck. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Metz. Absent. Okay. All right. We have five votes to pass that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item is item G on the agenda, waiving the bids for GSB 88 road treatment of $35,116.80, not to exceed that amount. Would somebody please like to make a motion? I'll, I'll make, make a motion of mo waiving the bids for GSB 88 road treatment, not to exceed $35,116.80. And a second. Rita, was that you? I'll second. Thank you, Sean and Rita. John, do you want to give us an overview of this, please? When we uh, purchase larger ticket items, um, such as work that I'm proposing, um, we normally have to go out for bid for such work, except when there is um, a sole source provider for the work. Um, the GSB 88 is a uh, material that is spread over 
newly re repaved roads, normally a year or two after the road goes in, and it fills in cracks and helps prevent further cracking in the roads. It's an extender of the life of the road, and we've used this in prior years with success. And the company that has the patent on this for the area is American Asphalt. So they are the only people who can use this, who sell this material, and it's, it's proprietary. So that's why it's a sole source bid. And rather than just bidding it out and having them being the only bidder, um, we go on a list of unit prices that they provide that's identical to what they provide other communities such as Carroll Stream and the, the city of Wheaton um, who also use this program also. So uh, we've done this before and I just request the waiving of the bids so that we can purchase uh, road sealing um, that will happen this fiscal year. And you've got a map in your, in your packet about what roads we're gonna be doing. Uh, for the public, it's basically what we did with the water main replacement program in Old Town two years ago. John, several years ago, we used a product that left like a white powder. Are we doing that again? No, that was called Reclamite, and it was not applied correctly, so to speak, but people drove on it after the fact, and it, um, it caused a mess in, in the village, and uh, we're not using it again because we had such a bad experience with it. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, a super heavy duty coat, seal coat for the roads, and it should extend the life of the road. Thanks. And I hear some ruffling or shuffling of papers. So if you're on the call and you're you know, doing something in the background, please mute yourself. Uh, any questions of the trustees for John about this? I don't see any. Uh, Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote, please? Trustee Kennedy. Trustee Kennedy. And I'll if go. you're I'll, muted. Yeah. yeah, he might be. I'll, co I'll co come back to him. Uh, Trustee Farrell Mayer. Aye. Uh, Trustee Dornisberger. Aye. Trustee Eck. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Can't hear he, him. He might have stepped away or something, but might we have. had uh, four okay. votes, right? Trustee Metz. Is yes, absent. and Trustee Metz is uh, still not here, not, not present. Okay, so it's 4 0 at this point. It did pass. Thank you. Hmm. All right, next uh, assignment is the first reading on a resolution opposing reduction in state's distribution of funds to municipalities. John, please help us. Yes, uh, this is being proposed by the Illinois Municipal League, which the village is a member of. Um, some background, uh, the state giveth and the state taketh away. Uh, the state has promised municipalities a certain share of sales tax that they collect on our behalf. Uh, to the villages and, and cities um, throughout the fiscal year. And we've agreed to a certain amount um, and historically that this has always happened. Uh, the state of Illinois has indicated, or the governor has indicated a desire to reduce this amount to municipalities by about 10%, which means about $50,000 uh, to the village as near as I can tell, uh, depending on when it comes into play. Um, the Illinois Municipal League and, and staff at the village think that this is a bad idea. We would like to voice our objections to the state. And in June, if you pass this resolution, we will send this to our elected officials uh, who represent us at the state level and to the governor protesting uh, the state's reduction in revenue to the village. And if you let me get on my high horse for a minute, the state requires that we balance our budget, that we manage our affairs in a fiscally prudent way. And we rely on a number of resources and promises from the state of Illinois. And when the state wants to renege on that promise, I am offended as a resident of, of the state. And I think that we are owed a promise. So this is what we are doing. So thank you. Mayor, if I could just interject real quick, I see Trustee Kennedy is back on it just for the purposes of a complete record. If, if we could just record his vote on the last item as he 
Uh, Trustee Kennedy, that was on the waiver of bids. You were called, uh, I think your screen was down. So if we could just have your vote recorded on that. So this is waiver bids because it has to go to an individual company because it was a proprietary product that they have. Right, this is that road treatment item. So I, yes. Thank you. Sorry okay. to interrupt. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you, Clerk Allison, you good? You got that? I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, John, uh, any questions for John on that? And the way we like to try to operate uh, on this board is to talk about something uh, at least once and then vote on it a second time. Sometimes we talk about something for a year or longer. But uh, in this case, we would be coming back next month with that. Um, any questions for John about that? Okay, moving to the last item on the agenda, uh, committee assignments. Um, trustees are assigned uh, responsibilities uh, in the village. It's kind of divide and conquer mentality. Uh, Brenda is the police committee chairperson along with being on the finance committee and parks. Chris is the finance chairperson along with being on public works. Rita is the trustee uh, liaison to planning and zoning and communications. Sean is the public works chairperson and on economic development. Aline is the economic development chairperson and Charlie is the planning and zoning liaison. And I would ask any resident interested in serving the village um, from time to time, we have openings. Uh, you heard tonight that we are reappointed two members of the planning and zoning. There will be opportunities next year. Uh, committees uh, get openings from time to time. Either somebody leaves or their term is up. So you are, if you're interested at all, you can reach out to me, John DeRocher, our village administrator, any trustee. We have an application on our website. Uh, you can email us. Um, just let us know if you're interested. And then when an opportunity comes up, we will be in contact with you. And with that, we're moving on to reports um, for the two new trustees. Uh, when we sit up here at the table, we go around the table and uh, this is your opportunity to report on either your committee things or projects that you're working on or things involving the village. So I'm gonna start with uh, trustee O'Loughlin, anything to report? I do, but just a quick question. Do we need to make a motion to approve the committee assignments? Uh, no. Ask Pat. Ask Pat. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. I apologize. Pat, is that needed? Yeah, I don't believe so, but we could do a motion for concurrence. I believe it's within your authority, but. Okay. Yes, let's go back. I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, Brenda, do you wanna make the motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the committee assignments as submitted by Mayor Hinshaw. I'll second. Thank you, Brenda and Sean. And again, I apologize for missing that. Uh, any questions or comments about that from the trustees? Okay, uh, Clerk Allison, could we have a roll call vote please? Yes, um, Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayor. Aye. Trustee Dornersberger. Aye. And Trustee Eck. Abstain. And, and I'm sorry? Abstain. Abstain, okay. And then a uh, Trustee Metz is absent. Thank you very much. That will be four. A eyes, one absent and one abstain. So that has been approved. And again, I'm sorry for missing that. My apologies. Okay, now to trustee reports. Brenda, do you have anything to report? I do. So just an update that we are having a movie in the park on Saturday, August 14th and Saturday, September 25th. But we add an additional event uh, for the village, the car show, which will be September 12th. 12th and more to come on that as well. Thank you. And we did a car show, what, two years ago? Yeah. That was a big success and it will be similar? 
Is the rough plan? Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank Trustee you. Rita, anything to report? No report. Thank you. Trustee Eck? Nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Eileen? Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. And Trustee Kennedy? Nothing to report. Thank you. Village Clerk, anything to report? Nothing to report. Village Treasurer? No report. Thank you, Maureen. Village Attorney? No report tonight, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Village Administrator. Yes, I have uh, four items. Uh, first, we've received notice from the City of Countryside of a water rate increase of seven cents per thousand gallons, effective June first. So I'll be presenting an ordinance to the board uh, for that for the June meeting. Um, the second item, or item one on my agenda, is um, the church assessment. Uh, the village is not proceeding with uh, further activity with uh, with the Lionsville Congregational Church. We had a study done and uh, the results of the study are revealed that it was signif significantly higher cost than we had anticipated uh, for potentially moving forward with the village obtaining the church um, report to bring it up to speed, uh, bring it up to levels for a municipal use. Bare bones would be about $5 million added cost to bring it to a true municipal facility would be one to $2 million on top of that. So we felt that it was not economically viable. So we will not be doing further action on this matter. Uh, no action is required by the board, but it was the consensus of the board not to proceed. So no further action. Um, my second, second item, item is, I, I wish to address some of the comments made um, earlier in the meeting about um, the village's sale of, of surplus property to the tollway authority. Uh, first off, the tollway has been exemplary with their correspondence with the village and I think the public in general about what's going on with the tollway. We have um, constant emails from them and alerts about road closures, plans, um, the overall project of, of the expansion of, of the tollway. And they've been really great to work with. And for a community the size of Indian Head Park of 3,809 people going against the tollway it almost seems insurmountable because they are, they're not the 800 pound gorilla, they are the 8,000 pound gorilla in the world. And when they came to us with their expansion plan and them wanting to take all of what we call the Mazer property, not just part of it, but all of it, um, that represents about 15% of our total retail area um, for stormwater management for the project area that's happening in the Indian Head Park. And the village board had the foresight to say, we have surplus property that really isn't needed by the village. That, in fact, we were given this property by, I believe, and that's a big, big word, I believe, by the toll authority when the tollway came in. So if you, we looked at the property, it's about 100 feet in, in width, um, and it's about four acres with some pretty severe grade changes in it. Um, it is west of Flag Creek without public access. So it really is a, a parcel that has no value to the village, and I would say minimal um, to, to the extent of being non-existent uh, liability to the village, but it's still property that we don't, didn't need. We looked at stormwater management and which is why they're, they're trying to um, acquire property to, because whenever you increase the impervious area of land, you need to um, take care of this, the increase in storm flow from that property. And so within the area, they had the, the ability to site stormwater management um, areas. And the area that the tollway authority obtained from the village is going to be a dry basin, which means it will only come into effect during heavy rains when Flag Creek overflows. And that will take a small portion of the overflow caused by the tollway work within the confines of the village limits. So it was really a win-win for everybody. Um, there is no demonstrable impact, positive or negative, 
as to the impact of property values for the tollway obtaining this property from, from the village. Furthermore, we were able to save about 15% of our commercial area, which if you look at our budget and look at what's available in the village, we don't have a lot. And rather than going to the property taxpayers of the village annually, looking for an increase in revenue so that we can do police protection, so that we can provide services, uh, we viewed this as a win-win uh, for the village. Um, the tollway um, did acquire some property in, um, in the triangle area on the very south end near the, uh, where the plan unit development is. Uh, they will be giving also some of that back to the village if they don't need it. So um, we believe, and the village board believed, and we looked at this for a very long time. We talked about this for over a year, why we negotiated with the tollway, why plans were being developed. And we were very transparent about what we were doing with this. And so the board made the decision to sell the property and, and we did, and we did it, um, I think, uh, at least a year ago, we received the money because it was in a prior fiscal year where we recorded the money. And if you look at this year's budget, in the narrative, we say point blank, we acquired, we sold land, we got $510,000 that we could use for any legal purpose. And that is, we pulled that money aside and we set it in a special account, so to speak, and we didn't count that against our cash reserves. So we pulled it off the top. So we have $510,000 sitting there that the board can use when they decide to use it. Ideally, we would use it for economic development, but again, it's the board's wish for any legal purpose. So that is kind of, I wanted to respond to the comments and I did do a memo about this. It's in your board packet. And if you have any questions about this, please ask me. Um, but we did it with the best intentions of, of the village in mind. So if anybody has any questions, board members, I'll, if not, I'll move on to the next item. Um, we're working on the shed ordinance still. Um, I've been in touch with um, some residents in the Robert Bartlett subdivision and the planning and zoning commission has asked for some guidance as to what would be an acceptable size for a shed. Um, in speaking with Lou Roski, who is um, in the Robert Bartlett subdivision, my uh, notes or my conversation indicate a 12 by 12 shed, maybe 10 feet high. I'm gonna confirm this, but we would like to get some design standards to help the Planning and Zoning Commission and ultimately the village board when matters come before uh, the village. And additionally, with the Robert Bartlett subdivision, we're still looking at the special use process and we're looking to streamline the process for everybody uh, so that we're not recreating the wheel for you know, the, hand, the number of cases that are out there. We'll try to do everything individually, but as far as mailings go, we'll do a mass mailing to help um, eco do economies of scale. So that is my report on sheds. And that is the extent of my report, unless if you have any questions of me. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. All right, we have uh, two reports left and we saved the best for last. Uh, Don, uh, you're up. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and hello to everyone. Happy spring. Uh, as the Mayor said earlier about the Tree City USA, uh, uh, we're proud as a public works to uh, keep the tradition of uh, Tree City USA and doing what we can to protect the trees that we do have and uh, and plant more. Uh, next week, we'll be planting about eight trees throughout the village, different areas, usually from the prior year, uh, cut downs of dead trees and uh, planting new this year in the spring, and then again in the fall. Um, so, and then moving forward now, we have a, there's quite a, a lot of trees around the village that uh, need to take, be taken care of, and especially Black Hawk Park and other areas. Uh, so moving forward, we're going to work with the, with the contractor to, um, treat the, the big trees, the, the Dutch elms and black hog and the, the big oak trees and uh, trim them, prune them, prune them and, and treat them uh, so that they uh, will grow and, and, and last uh, for as long as they possibly can. So uh, that's something we're gonna do moving forward. Also we'll try to uh, start a, a tree, tree inventory uh, through the village. It's a long process, but uh, we're gonna get it started this year. 
uh, with GPS and GIS. Um, uh, and along with that GPS and GIS, we just recently finished the wa uh, new water atlas updated uh, with GPS coordinates and put on a GIS map. Um, just finished that recently. Uh, Strand has worked on the sewer and sanitary um, atlas uh, updates as well. Uh, at doing that updates to both those atlases, we found uh, probably about a total of 10 to 15 to 20 different, uh, whether it be wa water valves and uh, sanitary and storm sewers that were buried, uh, not visible. So it's important to have those visible in case of any emergencies. So uh, doing these uh, updates, we were able to uh, locate them, uh, raise them to grade and be accessible in case of any emergency at any time. Uh, that's, uh, that's about it. Don, you had mentioned earlier to be about uh, a fountain in the park. Can you? Oh yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So that's one more thing. Uh, the fountains, they're, they're what, uh, 20 to 25 years old at the SEC Park. We found some uh, documents for that. Not sure about Blackhawk Park, all that is. But, um, they're, they're, they can't, they're constantly leaking now, uh, and, and, and the maintenance of them is, you know, that gets that cost adds up to buy new parts for them. So we're looking at some uh, the newer ones now in 2021. Uh, so with uh, not only just a drinking fountain for uh, people to get a drink out of, but they also have nut ones now with the uh, fill up your water bottle, and uh, also with a little dog dish at the bottom of it too for dogs to get a drink of water too. So uh, we're, we're looking to see what those costs. And as I said, like the cost uh, of maintaining the ones that are there now and, and are, are just every year, so there's something else that they're looking forward to uh, at Sack Park and uh, Black Hawk Park getting those they changed out for the new, new kind. Thank you, Don. And I think you mentioned uh, tree planting in years past. We've kind of had a little ceremony with the uh, trees and getting staff and uh, members of the board. Uh, so if you get a time scheduled for that, uh, you can get that to John or me. I'd like to get that out to all the trustees and maybe one of or two of us could uh, attend. Uh, that's always sure. a good event. Uh, it's part of Tree City. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Sure. Uh, I'll let you know what um, date uh, next week for uh, as soon as I nail it down to the day. Probably Wednesday or Thursday, but I'll let you know for sure tomorrow. And I know it's weather permitting, right? We need yeah. A uh, decent day. It's supposed to be nice next week, so hopefully it'll be good. Okay, I think that is it for all our reports. We are oh, now... Andy. Oh, Andy. I forgot. Andy, how could I... The best for last. Andy, you're up. Sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so a couple things to report. First, just a reminder to everyone, uh, Village Vehicle Stickers are on sale. Uh, get them before July 1. They double afterwards. Uh, it's possible to get them on the Village website. Uh, it's also possible to drop off payment with your yellow card in the silver drop box outside Village Hall, um, or it's possible to come into Village Hall. Uh, that's really it for Village uh, Stickers. Uh, as far as for garbage report, um, in April, uh, the village had a few special events and dates related to our uh, waste franchise agreement. Uh, for example, in the first two weeks, yard waste collection was um, free of charge. You wouldn't have to put a sticker out. Uh, and on April 16th, the village had its first village cleanup day, uh, in which residents were able to put up the five cubic yards of waste material out for only three stickers. And the day went really well uh, when we even, you know, we received a handful of compliments um, uh, who were thankful for the opportunity of uh, the cleanup day. And um, also on the first week of pickup, SBC uh, notified us that they would stop picking up uh, roughly 70 homes who were delinquent. They had sent out notices um, to these homes. On the day of pickup, we ended up uh, receiving some calls from residents uh, who would who would say that they had paid or that um, there was billing problems in which their bill was late or not received. Uh, after investigating it uh, and the issue, it appears that much of the uh, some of the issues regarding billing has to do with the uh, the national issues, unfortunately, with the post office. Um, and so we worked with SBC to have them go out to pick up uh, some of the people who were 
uh, not picked up that Friday. And we also let SBC know um, you know, to work with us uh, more so in the future on uh, notifying people, um, although they did send out notifications. Uh, but just to uh, maybe put a tag out physically on the bin first and then the next week, uh, stop the pickup. But overall, uh, at the week, it seemed to work because the week afterwards, uh, we went from around 70 delinquent accounts down to uh, 17. So that was good. Uh, and then finally, in April, the village conducted a survey of SBC Waste Solutions customers uh, regarding the general satisfaction with the program, as well as to gauge whether there is a demand for uh, increased scope of services or a take-all program. Uh, the results of, this, of the survey are still being compiled, uh, and they will be going before the Public Works Committee uh, to be reviewed, and then, of course, to the board and to the public. Um, and that's really all I have as far as garbage in April. And the final thing I'd like to remind everyone is um, almost exactly a month from now, on June 12th, we're having our electronics paint and shred uh, pickup or recycling day at uh, Public Works, which is 113078 place. Uh, you must, the only real requirement is you have to be a resident. So uh, either your current driver's license with your address or current village vehicle sticker uh, will get you in and you'll be able to drop off electronics, paint and uh, shred documents. And that event lasts from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that's uh, that's all I have to report there. Uh, Andy, again, I'm sorry for uh, skipping over you. Um, can I drop off a TV at the recycling event? Yes, you can. A printer? Yes, you can. A box of uh, paper to be shredded. Yes, you can. Paint. Yep. Does the paint have to be dry, or could it be a full or it, half it, full liquid? We, it's a, if it's we want it dry. Uh, if, if if it's fully wet, there might be some issues. So please have it dry. And you dry it out with cat litter or paper shreds or something like that, right? Or just leave the lid off and let it dry for a while. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Andy and. Uh, Charlie, uh, I have a question. Andy, uh, is, is this related to SBC or is this uh, village wide? Um, so it, it is village wide, uh, but SBC is providing it. Uh, the electronics and the um, uh, and the paint part, the shred, we the village uh, contracted with the shredding company to do that part. So will they, be will, will they be shredding right there so you can see it being shredded? They will. They will. Do we have a limit? Two boxes? Is that what we're thinking? Yeah, two two boxes is what we're asking people to limit to. Kind of depends on how it's going, though. If you're the only person, maybe you can get three. Maybe. Yeah. Right? yeah. And we, you know, we've gotten a lot of um, positive feedback so far from residents from our communication so far. So much that we actually extended the shred time originally. It was only for two hours, but we there seems to be a good amount of demand for it so we uh we were able to extend the time more so thank you andy and, and in the uh, public works arena i'm sorry i also forgot matt and matt i'm not sure if you're still with us or not uh and if you uh have anything to add um i know it's been a long meeting matt and you may uh be there there you are matt uh Anything you would like to add, Matt? Again, I apologize. Uh, nope, nothing. Um, other than you mentioned the Acacia uh, construction is ongoing already. So that will continue throughout the summer and into the fall. So just be patient uh, as you're driving in the area, if you're walking in the area. Um, just be patient because the better communication and coordination we can have between residents and the contractor, the smoother the construction will go. That's all. Thank you, Matt. Eileen, I saw your hand raised. Yes, thank you. Um, Andy, it's a question for you. Two questions, actually. So how did you determine that it, the U.S. Post Office was uh, responsible for uh, the bills not getting there timely? Sure. So we, well, partly from our own experience, we've... Um, We've had our own issues on the village side, sending out smoke, with smoke signals and other things, and also from talking with our um, local mailman who 
who's a veteran of the post office and um and he he does the route in acacia and most of the village i believe so he's really through that and through our own dealings and through talking with uh with our, uh, our own male person so uh, if I can suggest um, perhaps looking at the data and the bills when they come, when they were postmarked might be a good idea. I know we've also had late mail here. Uh, late mail coming used to come at 10, now it comes at 5 or 6 at night sometimes. Um, I'm not sure that we've ever not received a bill on time. So I'd like to see some more concrete empirical evidence uh, that it was the U.S. Post Office. I'm not saying it's not, but I, I think we need to do more. And then there was another question I had to, oh, the survey, um, that's being basically taken online is. Um, so there was a, there was a physical copy of the survey in the smoke signals. Um, yeah. And then there was an online one as well. Okay. Um, and have you gotten many of the physical ones back? We did, we did. We got um, around 50, around 50 and we got around a uh, hundred, a little over a hundred online, so. Online, okay. Um, I'm just wondering <clears throat> how many Indian Park reg residents are registered to our website so that we can get more of them to participate? Yeah, I, for the, uh, I'm yeah, I think, I think Linda, you said 150. And when you register on our website, uh, you can register for updates on police activity, uh, meeting agendas, financial. There's a whole list of things. And so each one has a different count. I've looked at that. And so some are more popular than others. So when Linda estimates 150, um, that's probably one of the more, more popular ones or the most popular one. But in total, <clears throat> you think it's about 150 residents that are registered overall? Okay. Yeah, again, uh, you'd have to go kind of list by list. In theory, I could sign up for meeting uh, notices and you could sign up for information on finances. And so that would be two people, but the list would only go up by one, if that makes sense. So um, I do a, a website for another organization and I can sort it so that everything's melded together and I know how many total residents are participating in the website. You can't do that? Uh, maybe if you come in and talk yeah. to Linda, Linda's shaking her head, yes, she can. So at some point, if you wanna come in, you can look at uh, what Linda has on the website if that's a fair way to leave it. Sounds good. Okay, we are on to, I believe, John, is that it? Did I forget anybody else? Okay, uh, resident comments. Uh, we got one um, that I want to read, and then I know, Susan, you had raised your hand, so be patient one moment. Uh, Dale Holmquist uh, sent in a note that said, uh, why wasn't this on the agenda? And I believe it was when we were talking about the uh, PUD issues. Um, they... Uh, she says, they have not been a good neighbor, just what we need, or 107 partiers every night of the week in IHP with spillover parking into our south side neighborhood. It's a hard no. And then at some point, I think, John, maybe you made a comment because then she added, this was not about the noise. Please correct the record. And then the last comment was, please correct the record regarding comment on driftwood. And then also is the village negotiating our water rate from countryside is the second highest water rate in the state of Illinois from Dale Holmquist. Thank you. All right, Susan, did you have something that you wanted to add? I did. Um, uh, Juro, sir, John, um, when you said that you guys feel that everything was transparent and out there and about the sale of the land behind my home, my mother's home. Um, did you even take into account that like at least three of the people who live on Pontiac Drive 
that are directly impacted and we are being impacted and will be further impacted by this, they're in their 80s and 90s. They don't use the computers. They don't, they don't go to these meetings. They don't know about these meetings. The only thing they get is this. Now, there was no direct communication through smoke signals about the sale of the land, nor can you find the pin number for that sale of the land. The only pin number was for the south part over um, on the other side of the tollway. That was the only thing that was there. You didn't ask any of us whether we felt that that land was worthy of being there. Uh, talk about tree city, you're just clear cut. Thousands of trees. Um, I'm sorry, all the deer and wildlife that we worry about or we, we seem to act like we care about, where are they gonna live now? They all lived back there. I, when you guys say that you're transparent, I, I, I just don't see it at all. You didn't come to us or ask us. You asked those couple people who had a home over in the triangle, you went to them and asked their opinion, but you didn't think to come to any of us and ask our opinion. Do you know those trees were like 50 years old? They take up sound, they take up air pollution and light pollution from the tollway. I, how can you possibly say that it's a win-win? Because it's not a win-win. And honestly, 510,000 for four acres? Are you, you're not very good at selling land. <laughs> yeah, I think you could have gotten a lot more, you know, if you wanted to ask them. But the only thing you put in the 2018 spring um, smoke signals was that it said, the good news is that other than the triangle area at Wolf Road and Joliet Roads, none of the single family homes in the village will be impacted by the project. So what did that send? What message did that send to the elderly people who live on Pontiac and who are dealing with this travesty right now? That they didn't need to worry. They didn't need to worry because, oh, we're not gonna be impacted. That's cool. I can trust our village and its trustees. I can trust them to make the right decision. You didn't ask any of us and it's directly impacting us. How could you do that? And why wasn't there a vote? And why didn't you come to us and ask us? Can I have an answer? Um, your three minutes is up and uh, I think we did talk about it that it was discussed you not at meetings. Any questions. You didn't okay. answer any of my questions that I ask right now. All right. Thank you, Susan. Any other comments? Oh, from wow. The, any other comments? Okay, I don't see any. Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I will make, make a, motion a motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. 9.35 p.m. Sorry, Rita. That's okay. I think I'll that was Sean. Rita, thank you for the second. Um, can we have a roll call vote, please? Trustee Eck. Yes. Trustee Donnersberger. Aye. Trustee Farrell Mayer. Aye. Trustee Kennedy. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. <laughs> she may not uh -huh. be here. Trustee okay. O'Loughlin? Aye. Okay, thank you. And we know that Trustee Metz is absent. Okay, this passed. Thank you. Adjournment passed. Good night. Good night.